Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, welcome you back for the uh, next part of the lecture uh, on this uh, to same topic obviously the inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. In the past two lectures we have uh, looked at uh, a few very basic components that is required for this particular course. One of it is that there should be a nion or inorganic species present in the biological system. I showed examples corresponding to that using so many different uh, uh, enzymes, uh, at least half a dozen different enzymes, whether they could be working in the human, they are in the plants, they are in the other kinds of organisms. So, therefore, uh, that is concept or aspect number one. So, aspect number one is the presence of the ion or species in the biological system. Okay. Aspect number uh, two that we have tried to look at is uh, what are what is the uh, you know life made up of. So for that we have uh, understood that uh, there are uh, bulk elements uh, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, etc. And these together will form uh, almost 96 percent of the total body weight. Then you have some macro minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Uh, phosphate, chloride, etc. And this will add a few more percentage and total will come to about 99 to 99.9 .9 percent of the total body weight and then it is the 0.1 uh, percent of the body weight that comes from the uh, essential elements or essential trace elements or essential ultra trace elements. Therefore, the life is, uh, is uh, existent not just by the weight not just by the bones, but it is by adding the elements which uh, basically uh, you know give the functionality. So, therefore, uh, so the as per that what we studied. So, life requires the, the uh, weight and strength and functional elements. Okay. So, it is these functional elements which basically uh, tells you about the filling the life into the body. So, this fills life into the body. Okay. So, so if you understand this, uh, yes definitely we can go to the next part of it and let us uh, look at the same. Okay, here uh, as you can see from this slide that uh, we have bulk elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulfur. And we have macro minerals sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, phosphate, sulfate, etcetera. And, and we have several trace and ultra trace elements iron, zinc, copper trace because they are present in terms of few grams to a body weight of 70 kilograms. And whereas ultra trace elements are those where we have only a few milligrams for the total body weight of 70 kilograms. And ultra trace elements can be further uh, divided into metallic and non-metallic. So this is uh, the the compositional aspects. 
So, therefore, having, having understood that the element should be present, the composition aspects, now probably we are at a stage where we can start studying what is uh, you know criteria for these kind of elements to be essential. So, what is the criteria for essentiality of the elements? As you can see, first of all, number one, whatever the element we talk about that should be present in the tissue of the animal or any species or for a human in their tissue at a comparable or reasonable or recognizable concentrations. Okay. So, that is number one. Number two, just because it is present in, in the body, it does not mean that uh, it is sufficient enough. It should have some kind of a function, it should have some kind of a role. The function is referred as a biochemical function. Some of them may be a structural function, some of them may be catalytic in function, some of them may be regulatory. Now, all these three terms I will make it clear not now after a few more hours when I come to the general aspects of the uh, or part 2 which, which refers to the general aspects of the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. Till then just take it as a structural, catalytic and regulatory. Okay. And so, two you are talking about the biofunction, uh, biochemical function. Then how do we know this particular function what we claimed in point number 2 is really from that. So, therefore, if that element is removed from the diet, if that element is made sure not available for the system, then that system must show some kind of a deficiency. Okay. So, this is nothing but a physiological deficiency. What does it mean? It means that there is some kind of a physiological defect or in other words a proper reaction or proper function is not exhibited by the organism and that is what it basically means. Then how do we know it is happening because of this? Because we have so many different elements is it happening because of that x or something some other y or z. So, in order to identify this particular difference you again put back that element x to the uh, organism. When you put back this element x to the organism obviously, the organism should uh, revive back to the normal or relieve back to the normal it must show the uh, great function. So, uh, so, therefore, then we can say that particular element x is essential for biological function is essential for life. Okay. So, now let us look at once again back number 1 the element x should be present in the tissue of the animals in a particular concentration. Number 2 it should carry a function. Number 3 if you remove such an element availability to the system then what you find is a kind of a deficiency a deficient syndrome. So, uh, and then the fourth is put back that element make that element available to it then in that situation the uh, species should get back to the normalcy and normal function. So, if it get back to the, gets back to the normal function that means the element x is an essential element. So, this is how the essentiality of the element is being identified uh, whether it is necessary or not. And let me remind you that the essentiality of the element is the one which among the, the uh, elements which are present in the, uh, the trace and ultra trace not the other ones. We are, we are referring mainly to the trace and ultra trace elements. And a few of the macro mineral for example, sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium these are the kinds of things. Okay, having seen that which are the bulk elements, which are the trace element, which are the ultra trace element, I think now as a chemist what we need to see? We put them in the regular position. What is the regular position? They have a position in the periodic table and that is what you can see here and you can uh, find all of them. The ones which are colored with the green, the green color are the ones which are basically present as a bulk elements. There is a hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulfur. These are known, they are at the catalytic active sites. So, the, the, for example, titanium, no enzyme is yet known. For example, chromium, no enzyme is yet known, but a little presence of these elements are still present in the tissue of the uh, animals of that. Now, coming to the molybdenum and tungsten, of course, there are enzymes are there and there are uh, for cadmium, 
uh, there are no enzyme known, but certain level of cadmium is always found in the tissue and mercury yes there are mercury thio based enzymes are there we will see towards the end of it what the thing and other elements are found in smaller concentrations like uh, uh, germanium arsenic tin antimony uh, thallium lead and some of these act like a micronutrient which means that there are no enzymes available for these however there is no enzymes, but still their small concentrations are absolutely essential for running life. Okay? So, that has been understood very well. So, they are present in ultra, ultra, ultra trace kind of things. So, there are other elements which are given blue in color like uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine kind of thing, selenium etcetera. These are also found in the uh, tissue and they are non-metallic trace elements or non metallic ultra trace elements. So, therefore, having seen the information on the previous slides, now I have tried to compile all these elements into this box, the box namely the periodic table. Now, this will give a kind of a feel as how we should discuss debate about these ones as we go along. So, uh, I will get back to this uh, uh, later on. Okay, how can we, uh, uh, so how do we understand uh, these are the elements only the ones which are chosen by the life, why life has chosen these elements not other. For this for a moment let us uh, have a, a look at the following. Let us say we have a, a human body having oxygen, carbon, uh, nit uh, hydrogen and other and having earth crust. So, if you see the uh, some parts of that, uh, let us look at this uh, comparison of these elemental composition between the earth and uh, human body. The human body we have the oxygen, carbon, hydrogen and other elements and if you look at the earth crust you have the oxygen very similar almost 50 percent, silicon which is 25 percent there is hardly anything at all and of course, there is calcium, calcium is also present. Yeah, iron, iron is also present. Aluminum 7.5 percent which is very high in the earth crust, we have no aluminum containing enzyme, we have no silicon containing enzyme in our body. So, therefore, it is not easy to bring a direct correlation between the composition of the elements of the earth with that of the composition of the elements of the human body, not directly. Some are matching. Iron, yes, iron is very much existent in uh, in the body, and the enzymes are very well uh, known for this thing. Calcium is very much existent, and a lot of enzymes are known. No enzyme of silicon, no enzyme of aluminum is known. So therefore, it is not easy to directly correlate and or conclude that the elements which are present in the earth crust are the responsible ones for the human assimilation. Because human uh, the, the life starts at the interface of the earth crust and the sea water. So, these are called sea sedimental uh, uh, areas. In the sea sedimental area the composition will be again different. So, sea sediment area is the one which is in contact directly with the sea water. So, therefore, sea water is available for the life to uh, generate. So, therefore, that is where uh, we have. So, in any case uh, also uh, it is very uh, not so easy to compare between the either the earth crust composition or the sea water composition, because in the sea water you have uh, uh, ppm, ppb level of many metal and other elements anions are also present and they are all available for life uh, as well. So, uh, so, in absence of any kind of uh, such a comparison between the uh, concentration of the elements in the earth versus the their concentration or importance in the human life, we need to look for some important criteria that would have been uh, necessary for the nature to choose this. So, nature must have kept its mind in understanding all this. So, it is not just the abundance. Uh, okay. Other factors like solubility of the uh, element, it could be charge, it could be oxidation state, it could be a size or radius ratio, radius 
or ligating centers in the proteins or what kind of geometry that we have, what kind of a, a stabilization energy which is thermodynamic, thermodynamic aspects. Then even the kinetic aspects are also important and other controls and reactivity. So, in effect what I would like to say is that the nature has chosen those elements, those elements which are shown over there, uh, these elements because of their coordination properties, because of their thermodynamic properties and because of their chemical properties. So, these are seem to be the responsible rather than just their concentration or abundance uh, in these. Yeah, I am sure you must have noticed the uh, coordination chemistry aspects, these are all talking about coordination aspects and these are talking about the thermodynamic aspects and then kinetic aspects. So, the coordination, stability and liability these are important. So, we will study these after a while, it is a little bit more details uh, to make sure everyone understands these parameters in the long run. Now, let us say, so we talked about certain elements and which elements etcetera. So, is there any kind of a uh, limit to these concentrations? Yes, in the body as you can see uh, the iron, copper, zinc these are all required at a higher level. This is the doses per day in terms of milligrams, they are required 10 to 20 milligrams up to about 5, 10, 15 to 20. Then you go to the manganese and cobalt they are required little bit less and you go further it is much less. Okay. So, therefore, we have uh, the concentrations of these elements are to different extents. Why? Why the concentration? Why do you think this concentration of uh, all the elements are not same, but they should be different? That is because the extent to which the enzymes on iron, the extent to which the enzymes on copper, the extent to which enzymes of zinc or manganese or their role in biological tissue, biological aspects is different. So, iron has a greater role by copper then followed by zinc, then manganese in very few cases and molybdenum also in few cases etcetera. So, therefore, uh, the concentration that uh, the body need to maintain is seem to be uh, proportional to the extent to which utilizes the corresponding uh, enzymes. So, you can always have a look at all these uh, aspects. Uh, of uh, not only the iron, copper, zinc, manganese, cobalt, molybdenum, you also have other sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, the things, and you require uh, uh, other ions much smaller in concentration. So, now you see that the different elements, uh, they, their doses per day is different because their involvement in the enzymes is different in this. Okay. So, having understood this, so why do not we look at the relation between the dose and how well the response is. So, dose response relation is given over here, this dose response relation uh, can be seen from this uh, Bertrand plot. Okay. So, what, uh, this plot has got what? The x axis, x axis is the dose of the element or the concentration of the element required per day. Okay. And what is the y axis? Y axis is how well what is the functionality? How good is the function? Is the function is very good? Uh, is the function is not so good? So, not so good could be deficiency. So, the extreme of the deficiency is death or too high toxicity, extreme of uh, uh, toxicity is again death. Okay. Now, so let us let, let me take you through this plot, let us start from here as you keep going. You can start uh, see, seeing this, it just slowly increases. So, what is happening on the x axis? You are increasing the concentration, on the y axis, the response is increasing. So, as you go from very low concentration towards the higher, the concentration as the concentration increases, the response increase. At some region, this one, even if the concentration is increasing, the response is not. So, such a kind of region is called the optimum region, optimum concentration or healthy uh, concentration for real health to be maintained. Now, go beyond that, uh, the activity is falling down, activity is falling down. 
So, increase in concentration there is a toxicity further increase in the concentration there is a death. Okay. So, what did I uh, say now? I said the concentration versus the, uh, the this uh, response has an increase direction, a decrease direction and a plateau region. The plateau region is a healthy region that much concentration need to be maintained all through. And anything lower is called deficient, very low can lead to death, higher can be toxic, very high can be death. So, so that means body happily functions within this green range and with some kind of a crippling it can function deficiency it can sustain some extent of toxicity when the toxicity goes too high it dies and deficiency also goes too low then it becomes uh, the death. So, th this is meant only for the trace and ultra trace elements not for the bulk elements not for the bulk elements at all. So, I hope now you understand the concentration the concentration should be maintained by the body that means concentration should be supplemented to the body. Uh, so, that is why we have to eat every day. So, we have to maintain balance the elements the iron, the copper, the zinc, the manganese, the cobalt etcetera all of these have to be maintained in the body. Uh, so, because they are circulated in the throughout the body uh, they get into the enzymes they go out they get into the enzymes and they go out as well. So, otherwise we could have been uh, just eating once in my in our lifetime and never need to take anything more. So, which is obviously not true that means there is a dynamic uh, uh, equilibrium uh, working in this. So, let us look at these things when you have a, a less of that element it is deficiency the more of that element we have a uh, excess uh, syndrome. So, one can look at these kind of a uh, syndromes uh, for example, iron we know very well everyone knows that when iron deficiency is there we call it is anemia and when you have a excess of iron we call it is a siderosis. So, excess of iron is a problem in the body less of an iron is also a problem to the body. Similarly, zinc uh, the deficiency is a, a dwarfism and uh, uh, excess is also a problem. So, there are many of these almost all of these iron has certain characteristics of deficiency and excess, copper has certain characteristics of deficiency and excess, uh, zinc has got deficiency and excess, manganese has got deficiency and excess, cobalt. So, the each one has one different deficient or more, more than one deficient uh, syndrome more than one excess based syndromes too and it is not only for those elements even for the potassium, for the magnesium, for the calcium, for the chromium, for the selenium and cadmium lead and mercury all of these. See these are toxic elements the cadmium and mercury. So, we talk about mainly high levels of doses of these the high levels of doses of these cadmium nephritis is, that means a disease that is uh, associated with the with the kidneys. Okay. So, uh, all these kinds of things. So, there are different kinds of the uh, syndromes of the disease uh, associated with the deficiency there are some kinds of things which are associated with the excess too deficient is a danger can lead to death too excess is a danger can lead to uh, the uh, death as well. Uh, so, I hope you have been able to understand this. So, I think I will leave you for 30 seconds uh, to understand what all I said. Okay, hope you got a feel that what I was saying what I was saying is these essential trace and ultra trace elements we cannot have whatever the levels we want it should not be too low it should not be too high as well and that is where I have explained to you a while ago that uh, the dose response relationship. So, this region is a happy region beyond this is a danger below this is also a danger region. Okay. So, now let us move to another aspect. Okay. So, this aspect is concerned with how such an elements you have already seen that there, there are different elements associated with the uh, with the uh, with the human life. So, many uh, elements are there, but we will try to look at one of the element which is iron. So, the iron element how it is being absorbed. So, we cannot look at each one of these. So, iron absorption let us see this 
Finally, it requires to be uh, given into the blood. At the lumen, there are see you take some uh, iron containing uh, food. So, the iron ions are there, these ions should be taken up. So, these are taken up at a uh, at a lumen, how who will take it? There are ligands, these ligands can capture iron 2, iron 3 to form iron chelates. So, at the lumens surface you are forming iron chelates and these iron chelates are then passed. So, now the iron is covered by the uh, biological molecule which is present at the lumen and this chelate is now taken inside it is called intestine, intestines. So, again intestine, so it will exchange these chelates to endogenous ligands or macromolecules. So, from macromolecule then endogenous ligands and from the intestine this will get into the these chelates are transported into the blood and in the blood you know that you have a protein which is called transferrin, there is reticulocytes, you have depocells, so many different kind of things are there. So, therefore, iron is. So, it is not that whatever you take straight away into your body, whatever you eat is going is just straight away without any gate. So, there is a first security check, then there is a second security ch check and there is a finally transfer to that. So, these are three different gated levels through which the iron is absorbed. Similarly, zinc, similarly uh, copper, uh, nickel, any of the ion that you talk about, the absorption at the, uh, by the intestines and releasing into the blood is a very common phenomena, but the ligands involved are different in each case. Okay? And the transporting proteins are also uh, different in each case. Okay? So, in this aspect what I would like to tell you is that so far we have learned the following aspects. One is this the biological entities contain inorganic elements, ions, species. For example, lot of enzymes have got the inorganic elements present in, in the form of ions and they are very active, they are very vital, they in fact play very crucial roles which I am going to explain in this course as we wait for some more time. That is uh, aspect number 1 and details will come later. Uh, aspect number uh, 2 is the, uh, the these uh, elements, the entire uh, ele elements present in the periodic table 118 elements which are known today not all form uh, any kind of a role with the biological systems. About 30 different elements are known to find uh, their role in the biological systems of which uh, a few are called bulk elements like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, 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 you know the sulfur all these kinds of things. This is a bulk element then you have a macro minerals sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, etc., chloride, sulphate and other things. And uh, and uh, that is the point number 2 that we have uh, many elements which are present uh, in this. So, carbon uh, the uh, uh, elements which are nothing but the bulk in nature, these will constitute uh, about 95 to 96 percent of this and if you add the bulk minerals also 99.9 .9 percent of the body weight is uh, filled by this, but it is those 0.1 percent of the elements which are called the uh, which are called the trace ultra trace elements which comp, uh, basically gives the life to the uh, body. And this is the second aspect. The third aspect we when we learned was, so these elements when you place into the biological table, uh, uh, biological periodic table then you see that there are only certain elements which are important essential not all of them. Oh, uh, how is this being decided? This is being decided because of their coordination properties, this is decided because of their uh, the thermodynamic stability aspects, these are being decided because of their kinetic reactivity. So, all these things together will decide. The fourth factor is that their concentration levels, the essential ultra trace elements essential concentration should be maintained in the body. And uh, if they are too little or too low in concentration, they give deficiency syndromes. If they are too high in concentration, they give a uh, uh, they give toxicity. Both deficiency and toxicity are dangerous uh, uh, things. Then the fifth point is how are these taken in? They are taken by the absorption 
uh, from the lumen to the intestine to the blood. So, I think if these factors you keep in mind the next lecture I will concentrate on what binds to this, how they are attached to the biological systems uh, etcetera. Thank you.